really hard for me to uh, disentangle from the moment, mm -hmm. you know, because it was very of its moment in the sense that they were like, oh, no, we're going to do we're going to go back to basics and we're really going to it's about the victims and it's about trauma. And we're going to use a lot of, um, yeah, fancy camera work, you know, yeah. like and, and that was all really what was going on at the time. And so they were successful at plugging into the zeitgeist with this movie. I'll say that about it. But, yeah, when it goes back, a lot of when it is tr – like, I think that trying to make a Halloween movie that is, quote, unquote, about something bigger might be a fundamental mistake because what these movies – what makes them what they are is the elegant simplicity of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And, and I think ultimately they run into, like, exactly how much can this thing have a philosophical backbone when it essentially is – a series of scenes of Michael Myers killing people. Right. You know, there's yeah, not a lot of. You can overlay you other can themes on that. top of that all you want. Right. But like in the end, you have to you have to reckon with the fundamental pleasure of watching a Halloween movie. Like we don't need to litigate like yeah. whether it's problematic to enjoy watching people die in a movie or not. But I mean, for a lot of people, it is like a very like primal kind of kick. It's like, ha ha, they're dead and I'm alive. Woo! <laughs> like that's like yeah. the, that's the, that's the animal part of reaction to a, a slasher movie. Yeah. And I think that they don't either, either they don't, they aren't equipped to, or they haven't really thought through how to reconcile that with, like having bigger themes. I think I, I think Halloween 2018 has an interesting idea on paper. Again, I think it it's uh, sort of unapologetically plagiaristic of Halloween H2O, <laughs> which the movie would like the audience to forget in, yeah. in part so it's that the audience – It's kind of a damning detail, especially when you look at the new one, Halloween Kills, which lifts a plot point from a different disavowed Halloween yeah. sequel. It's kind of like, guys, you're really trying to have it both ways here. <laughs> yeah, I mean these films – they go out of their way. I mean, this is a very this is a very modern blockbuster technique of basically saying, in order to make this feel special and different than just another sequel, mm -hmm. we are going to position this as a direct sequel. Mm -hmm. The idea is that all those movies you didn't like, we're throwing those out. They're gone. This like, sorry you had to deal with those. This new one, this one is really the sequel you've been waiting for the mm -hmm. whole time. It's it's a marketing gimmick ultimately, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm especially bothered by it with Green's film because I feel like on some level, the movie basically says says to its audience, all those Halloween films that happened in between are are gone. They're not in the continuity anymore. They don't exist. And then the the film turns around and walks very much in their footsteps. I mean, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, this is not so different than the various sequels we got to Halloween over the years. I mean, there's plenty of um, – it. I do think it has more in common with something like Halloween 2, the original Halloween right. 2, than it does with the original Halloween. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. And another interesting thing about this series that – Sometimes it works for me. I know it doesn't really work for you in any case, but uh, Danny McBride, the comedian, mm -hmm. co-wrote and like he executive produces these new movies, and he's worked with David Gordon Green, the director, for a long time. So it makes sense. But they they try to put more comedy into these movies. Yeah. Um, they have comedy, and then they also they amp up the comedy and the brutality of the kills. And I think that that's another element that they just either didn't think through or aren't capable of balancing tonally. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they, I mean, I like David Gordon Green in general and, uh, you know, I've He's had right. a complicated relationship to his work over the years. I remember for a long time I felt I felt a weird amount of, uh, as, as a critic and a cinephile, I felt almost betrayed by his turn to stoner comedy and now I look, yeah. back, I look back on feeling that way. And, and those just, movies are super tonally inconsistent too. They are. <laughs> stoner comedies are very <laughs> tonally inconsistent. <laughs> I mean, I, I look back at that time and think that like Green should make the movies he wants to make. Who am I to tell him what kind of movie sure, to make? Sure, you like, know, it, whatever. It, if he wants to, to stop making Junior Terrence Malick movies and start making stoner comedies, that's his business and right. let's let him be the, the filmmaker he wants to be. But I don't think that he always, uh, he's always the right fit for material necessarily mm. and uh, watching the 2018 Halloween, I mean, he's got a lot of chops as a filmmaker. There, there's some really well directed sequences in the film. Sure, but I don't know if he gets the tone right. And, and I really do think that the intrusions of comedy, well, well, they do make this a distinctive Halloween film. Mm -hmm. He also has a and bad th habit of stepping on his own scares. Yeah, he steps on his own scares. Right, like the 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 brutality undercuts the comedy, and the comedy undercuts the scares. Yeah. And so you're just and so yeah, it ends up being very messy. Yep. The other and thing about the, the new one is 
uh, exponentially more so than the <laughs> 2018 Halloween. This is a very messy movie. Again, if you'd like to hear our thoughts on that, we have a bonus episode this week as well talking about Halloween Kills. Like Halloween 2018 at least keeps it relatively straightforward with the storyline. Yeah. But the new one adds all these different subplots and stuff and it's just like, no, nah, too far. <laughs> too far for me. Um, the other thing about the 2018 Halloween that bugs me, I mean, I, I, clearly a lot of things about it bug me. This I'm is not turned a fan of this into film. the <laughs> Halloween gripe hour. <laughs> yeah, it's just a rant about this movie, you know? I don't know. Certain movies just bug you. And I think the fact that this one was so well received probably fueled that a little bit for me. But uh, one of the things that bugs well me. Well shot. No, it's 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 it certainly is well shot and it's well made and it's uh, reasonably well acted. Mm-hmm. I like Jamie Lee Curtis in it. It's fun to see her do this spin on Laurie Strode. It's an, Judy Greer's in the mix. We love Judy Greer. Yes, we do. Um, there was but, that one funny kid who yells "Shut up, Dave." <laughs> okay, I, I, I might I might that lump one. that in the. This thing doesn't need as much comedy as it has. Okay, but. fair enough. But I like that one kid, the one babysitting kid who's like, nope, and like runs out of the house when Michael Myers comes. I was like, yeah, that's See, a, but that's a that's prime a example. Kid. He like jumps out of the closet, stabs this woman, and that moment is not even over before the kid makes a joke. And I just feel like you're just – The kid's a so- sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just feel like why not let, let us feel – Fear for a second, mm, you know. Let us mm-hmm, let us mm-hmm. let us uh, absorb the horror a little bit. Okay, you don't have to undercut it so much. Um, but I think I think one of my major issues with the film is that it it has this um, it has this kind of fan service reverence for the original, and that it's repeating certain shots. It's certainly it's a legacy sequel in in the way that we discussed already. Not just in in that it is uh, negating all the films that came. That, that came between uh, it and, and the original Halloween, mm-hmm. but also that it, it's literally like it, it, it's literally like borrowing shots from the original Halloween, tweaking them. There's like a moment where Laurie is standing exactly where Michael was in, a, in, a, in an iconic shot from the original, but it feels like all that stuff is a super a superficial appreciation of the original Halloween, mm. and that none of that film's values really made it into the 2018. Well, film. certainly not the simplicity. Yeah, or the suspense, really. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, again, his and his so one is as violent legacy as the sequels. sequels are like that. Yeah, so many nowadays. Like yeah. when we're recording this, we're in the uh, aftermath of Ghostbusters Afterlife yeah. reviews coming out. <laughs> oh boy! Neither of us have seen that yet, but yes, the review. A lot of the reviews. Uh, there's a trend in the reviews for that film, the early ones, that that the film is exceptionally reverent about Ghostbusters to the point where it's. Um, kind of com- comical by accident. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's well, well. It's like uh, it's like constantly trotting out things that people like objects that people loved from yeah. Ghostbusters. There is a certain like jangling keys in front of a baby quality to a lot of these legacy sequels. It's like, look, look at yeah. this. You know what this is, and you're supposed to go yay and clap. Right, exactly. Like uh, I find it insulting personally. Let, let's let's go on to the last point. We've bitched about. Yeah, legacy yeah. Sequels. Okay, <laughs> uh, we can we can move on from from Halloween. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I guess my final question about Halloween is: mm-hmm. um, Is there somewhere interesting this franchise should c- can still go? You know, uh, is there a way to to make these movies interesting again, or should you know? I mean, obviously, there's one more Halloween movie coming next October. Halloween ends. Which do you promise? I, I feel like <laughs> that, that title that title will prove a lie the minute that Halloween ends makes a ton of I money. I will say I like. it does talk about undercutting your own scares. The fact that they've already announced that there's going to be another one. Yeah. Like. Well, it sort of feels like of watching my- Halloween Kills. Like, you know, we know that this thing won't provide none, any. None closure. of this is going to stick. Yeah. Right, it's, a, it's a middle installment. Mm-hmm. You know. I, th- that's it. Well. Well, we're going to get into that when we talk about Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, at a certain point, I feel like th- there's only – you get to a certain point with this franchise where um, it, it really is just giving you the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's enough to keep Michael in, in – you know, to keep Michael profitable, mm-hmm. you know? Like they're going to keep making these movies so long as people go, go and see them. Yeah. And maybe it's it's a lot to ask of a slasher franchise that it actually do something different. Um, but – I'm I don't bored know if of they them. need to do something different is the thing. I think that where Halloween sequels end up going wrong a lot is when they start overthinking it. Mm, okay. And that I think that 
you know, I think that this is incredibly intimidating and not a lot of filmmakers could pull it off. But I think that if you wanted to do a remake of Halloween that was in the style of Carpenter's, where it is, you know, very um, streamlined and it is all about suspense and it's Hitchcockian and all that kind of stuff, that 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 would I'd like that. Well, I, but I guess my response back to, to basics, so to speak. My response to that would be twofold. Mm. Um, one, if you're going to do a remake in the style of Carpenter's original, you know, why not just watch? Why not Carpenter's? just watch the original? Cause, it's cause always the question. It's probably though, yeah. not going to top Carpenter, honestly. No, you know? well, that's why I said it's intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, um, I, I would almost just rather see filmmakers take lessons from that film instead mm. of just giving us more Halloween. I actually yeah. think the best. Halloween offspring, maybe, is it is it follows. Yeah, totally. Which I think that there is a lot of, I mean, we talked at the beginning of this episode, we talked about how Halloween, one of the things that Halloween does, one of the reasons it remains scary is that it's about the inevitability of death coming for you. It's right. just this force that comes for you. And I think it follows, runs with that idea. It does. You know? It very much does. It's it's very uh, primal in that same way. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's this thing that's coming to get you and there's nothing you can do about it. Yep. Yep. And uh, that's a film that uses the camera in a, in a way that I think Carpenter would appreciate if he yeah if he the ever staging put the Xbox in it follows down. was very good yeah yeah, yeah. I mean like um, like you can see the values of Halloween in the way that it's staged mm -hmm. it's not about Michael Myers but it is to me that feels more in the spirit of the original Halloween than most of the sequels yeah I know I feel like this is something that comes up a lot you know like when critics talk about like what we'd like to see and the answer is always like why don't you just make a new movie that can launch a new <laughs> franchise but unfortunately the business doesn't if it ever worked that way it certainly doesn't seem to now. yeah <laughs> so maybe you know okay well if we can't have that ideal thing of more movies like it follows that are in the spirit of mm. halloween but aren't following the letter necessarily what if you know you Went back to that Halloween three. Well, if you yeah. gotta slap the name Halloween on it, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I almost wish that had, that had happened because Halloween three. Uh, I think one of the reasons that it works is that it it has some of the atmosphere of the original Halloween. It just applies it to a different idea. Yeah. So why not? You know, I, I like the idea of more franchises that are that are sort of. Tonal continuations as opposed to plot or premise continu mm -hmm. continuations. You and, know? You, and producers, you can put the name Halloween on it. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween Kills is out now in theaters and streaming on Peacock. And if you'd like to hear our thoughts about that film, we've got a bonus episode all about Halloween Kills. It's also up on the site now. And while you're at it, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to Film Club wherever you get your podcasts. This week's episode of Film Club was hosted by me, Alex Dowd, and by Katie Reif. Produced by Carl Blomberg, our sound mixer and finishing editor is Zach Goldsboro, and our motion graphics designer is Julie Mullins. Tune in next week for a brand new episode. Thanks, folks. Bye.